instead of shape. Well, <laughs> well, good day, I guess. We're actually taping this in the evening. We even have our aprons on because we've been busy cooking supper in the kitchen and we put it down on low. So we're gonna just like zip through our little segment of Thelma and Louise tonight so that our supper isn't burning in the house because I'm not so sure the handyman is impressed when we have burnt <laughs> suppers, especially when I'm multitasking. That drives him nuts. Remember, women can't multitask. Men can't and they don't get it. I hope I have enough. No offense any to any men that. out there who may be very good at it. I actually had a man tell me one time, he came to fix my computer and he informed me that you are way more productive if you function or focus on one task rather than think you can do multitasking. And there's times I believe him, but most of the time... We're women and we can do more than one thing absolutely. at a time. You just can't have too many browser tabs open at the same time <laughs> where you can't keep them straight. So maybe we should just like jump right into our show and tell because as we said, supper is cooking. Can't burn the hash browns. <laughs> this is our new Charlotte's Web. <laughs> And now the she spiders hasn't are been starting to come out too. I have. Yes, you have. <laughs> um, so you've seen a sneak peek of this on Facebook a while back, but I was busy hand quilting and it's finally done. So this shows off half inch hexes. Um, if you saw the very first one we did, which is probably pictured on our website, now you see what a more controlled version is. We're kind of pleased with that in the colors. Gray is such a popular color right now that it is. will look nice in your home. So this we're going to show just as it's a work in progress. Um, but this is kind of different. It was a unique way to put the hexes together. Um, all the points are just a couple stitches pieced together, unlike what you see here, which is more of a traditional piece taxi and in the midst of getting it sewn together we've decided we need to maybe make a few more so it becomes a runner instead of just one single piece so look forward to something like this down the road this is the first time we've made a hexi project with flannel and i think it would be a great sew along well, this could be a sew along or a class offer right um just because of how it was pieced together it was very different this is probably one of my favorites i really like this as well so this is called Fireworks. Happy Summer Quilt. Um, and features pentagons with hexagons. And uses too many charms and you don't have any scraps left over, which is kind of nice. That goes together really quick for those who like English paper piecing and want to expand your horizons. You can add two shapes instead of just one. And they work so well together. They did. It was really fun to put together. And then we cruise into panels. So this is called Calhoun, because that's one of the lakes my dad and brother and I fish on. Perfect. Um, and it was my attempt at twin needling, which I have to say was moderately successful, but it's kind of fun to step out of the box and expand your quilting horizons. So you can see, if you haven't done twin needling, you can see that framing the piece block kind of popping out into the border. And it goes really well till your thread starts breaking. Yes, that always poses a problem. And then it requires some patience. Sometimes Maybe a little a cussing and, and some And sometimes ripping. I've ended up having to just switch to straight line quilting and make it very, very, very narrow to make it look like it's been and that's twin needle. I cheated, but that was okay. Where there's a will, there's, there's a, a way, way, and there's always more than one road to get to the final destination. And you never know until you try. It's better to try. We appreciate it, all of you who have shared pictures from our Facebook sew along. If you missed out on it, the directions are still up there for you to use. But um, believe it or not, this was a quilt top that we had started piecing a while back. And once we found borders, we're like, we might as well use it and share it because you can get it done just in time for Easter. So it's actually in con connection or with uh, March Madness. It was. Well, how did How'd your you? bracket do? Mine kind of stunk. I like to root for the underdog, and, you know, sometimes you shouldn't do that. I didn't root for an underdog, and I still shouldn't have picked who I did. 
but I tied for last in my pool, so that's got to be worth something. <laughs> I finished second to last oh, in my pool. You and I were about the <laughs> same speed, Thelma. <laughs> and you know what I think is funny? You know, the guys in our office, they are researching, and they've got all these little formulas that they use, and it's as good as guess of anybody's. So nope. not saying that I uh, did very well myself, but I did win the very first year I played it, and that really irked them. So I didn't really want to win again because who knows? Your head might not have fit into the office if you would have won again. I might have been outlawed. I was going to say they might not have let you play. Yeah. Let you play. So this little guy is Porter's Candy Patch. And we really like the colors that have been present on this one. And also played around with the quilting a little bit. That's been kind of my, when you have the time to quilt and more importantly rip if you don't like the quilting because <laughs> things don't have to be done at a deadline. Hey, you can play around just a little bit and you never know what you're going to come up with. Did you take a seam ripper with you out there? I actually have two. <laughs> I can rip one in each hand. <laughs> Mighty fast ripping, South Dakota style. South Dakota ripping. And I do have to let you know that that mighty little ripper has been used more than once. <laughs> and that's okay. So I'm notorious for uh, sewing projects together. And when we had the quilt shop, they'd be up on the wall and people would ask about them. And I'd have to admit that I didn't measure anything. I just sewed it together and it worked and we liked how it looked. But you can't math that kind of stuff out. It's usually a little difficult. That's what this project was. <laughs> and so, with correct math, we ended up with this project. So, Moda, at one point in time, had Moda treats, which we have up here. And Nobody I think three that they're three and a half inch blocks, squares. So, you can either use one of these to make one of these, or you can just use scraps that you have at home. And this is called tumbleweed. And I don't think they make the three and a half inch squares anymore. I don't believe that that was something that must have went over very well. So it seems so if like you have one have in your stash <laughs> of the two and a half inch squares. squares. Well, how about you? What do you have? Your hands well, have been busy stitching. I don't seem like I have a lot to stitching. show for, but I she try to stitch stitching. every night. I have a, a brand new project, another to everything there is a season because it is my favorite Bible verse and um, I decided to do a scaled down version of that, it so looks I actually fantastic. have that sitting um, by my chair. Fantastic, fantastic. And I'm going to keep it under wraps until it is stitched and ready for you to uh, look at. But I do have this little guy, and I kind of hate to show it because, again, I don't have the pattern done, but hopefully I'm going to have a couple days off from my office job through Friday and Saturday, uh, even though the government was so kind to extend <laughs> the tax de deadline date to May 17th, um, which requires another month of office work. And let me tell you, I sit at my desk and I have a mind back here on the farm in the quilt shop thinking about all the things that I should be doing, could be doing, and would rather want to be doing, but it will get here. And then this little guy is called Basket of Blooms. And I just uploaded that onto our website. So if it's something that you like, um, you certainly can go to the website and download that pattern for free. I did some crazy quilt stitching out here in the, that open area, um, a little bit different than what I've done in the past. So I like it and it's a quick little project to put together for spring. And then I also uploaded this project. So the last time we did a Thelma and Weezer session, I think we showed you a snowman that was in the same kind of frame. And we will be doing that as a stitch along, but we decided we would hold off until we really are more excited about snow because I don't know about you, these last couple of days when the snow has been falling, it hasn't been, oh my gosh, look at the snow, it's so pretty. So we did this little project for spring and it too is available on our website. Um, this is a purchase pattern, but it is downloadable. So if it's something that you like, uh, you can go there and download it and you'll immediately have the pattern. 
The thing that I want to point out if you don't have a frame is that we stitched this on one solid piece of wool and so these oh. areas here that are the wood dividers you actually could draw a line in there and do a fly stitch or buttonhole to make it look like each piece has been put together and I have not done that so I don't actually have a project that I can show you uh, what that would look like on but as I've worked with mine felt that that would be a nice way to use it as well and I've had a lot of fun with these little frames. I so. love the rabbits. I, I liked it too when I got it done. I did some dimensional work on it. So I've actually got a video that will be uploaded on our website. So if you purchase the pattern, you can look at the video to see how I did the tail and the whiskers and that type of thing. So that is the only wool that I have to share with you as of right now. But I promise she's got lots sitting next to her chair that she's been yeah. busy stitching on. But we have some things that we're kind of excited about. Yeah. Top of the list is I am going to be a grandma. She is in October. Another fall baby, another quilting baby. So we probably will be looking at designing some baby things. I've actually ordered our very first line of baby fabric into the shop, which is due in sometime in June. So hopefully we'll get some things sewn up before baby P arrives. Right? Absolutely. Lots of exciting stuff. And we did cancel our bus trip. We just, we, this weighed on us uh, for quite some time. Our husbands had a little input in it. Um, Baby P maybe had just a tad bit of a input into it. And we felt for everybody's sake that it was best to stay on the safe road and cancel the trip altogether. So we have sent checks back out to those of you that um, had sent your payment in. And if it looks like it will be safe to travel in 2022 or some year, Shortly thereafter, uh, we will put together a brand new bus trip, but we felt that a bus is quite uh, small confines to have a bunch of people in it and it was just too risky because we really do feel responsible for the safety and health of those people that we're with. And we it feel just, terrible if somebody got it on the bus and it resulted in everybody on the bus getting yeah, sick. It just isn't worth it. Some are vaccinated, some are not. Everybody some can't wear masks. masks all day. So it just, there were, you know, some things that we, we just really weighed it back That's a hard forth. decision to make this year. Unlike last year, we didn't really have a choice. Right. This, was, this was a tough decision for us. It really was. And I think the other thing that weighed into it pretty heavy for us is that we haven't had a chance to connect with you for almost time. two years and it just it, that's way too long so it was so tough in, to give that up in replacement of that you can follow us we decided we were going to try something <laughs> in a caravan. new we don't go out and do a quilt shop hop and well i don't Hardly think ever. Really anybody has no since covid hit nope so we've put together a one day one trip, day trip. we will be leaving home here and we'll have a pickup point so to say um, that we'll designate. We haven't done that yet because we really didn't know what kind of response we were going to get to this, but we're calling it the Quilter's Caravan. Thursday, June 24th. And our very first shop that we're going to be stopping at will be Del Rapids, South Dakota. Which is pretty close to home for me. And we plan to be there at nine o'clock in the morning. And we felt like it was, and then we've got five or six shops um, that they're listed on our website. So if you're interested in it, go to the website because the details will be there. Um, we will be at the shop. So you can we still felt see like if you came at the same time, we would get to connect with you. We just won't be traveling in the same vehicle. Um, we felt that that was less risky. You still get the inspiration of a shop in case, because there's a lot of people that really haven't been out since COVID happened. And we'll move on to Sioux Falls, to Beardsford, then we're going to uh, pop over to Paulina, Iowa, and then come back through Minnesota, get a couple shops there. Worthington and Wyndham in Minnesota. And then finally, we're going to stop at the winery in Bellevue for Can't pizza, pizza and a beverage. And wine. And so you or can pop. travel behind us. You can, it's a setup where you can just, when you're done in the quilt shop, you can you move can on to the on. next shop. Um, but we'll all be in the same vicinity 
off and on probably during that day. There's no charge free. to do it. Yep. It's just a day we've set up. We know we're going to go out and we're pretty excited because we've had some good response we from have it. Had we're excited response. people want to travel. So if you're interested, check out the website. Shadesofpast.com. And then our uh, second thing or third, whatever that we want to share with you is uh, we attended virtual quilt market mm -hmm. uh, this spring and one of the sessions uh, a lady presented about a quilt pattern that she wrote which normally Shades of the Past doesn't, doesn't do, do that kind of thing but I thought it was very intriguing that she did a COVID friends tribute quilt and each, it was really fun. each block has well, some kind block, of symbolism. Yeah. So, Weezer, she's got all her blocks sewn together. Made it. So the blocks are about six and a half inches. You know, mine weren't. I did mine controlled. You're doing yours a scrappy. little more scrappy. Um, so you start off with the Chinese block. She's got kind of, I think it's kind of cool how she has things set up. Um, well, I'll keep showing you blocks here. Um, I'm looking for mine. It's set up from like start to kind of where we're at in the whole realm of COVID. Um, and it's kind of cool. This block is, talks about like opening things up when the first case was in the US. And she's got reflective reflection questions at the very end. So if you journal about it and put this together, it kind of makes um, a unique keepsake. And as I was journaling about mine, um, I kind of felt like we all have been affected by COVID. But each of us has been affected so differently, whether it's staying at home, whether it's your job, whether it's um, family, losing loved ones, knowing people that have had it. Um, we all have been through the same thing, but we all have experienced it very differently. And so it's kind of cool to me that when you get the thing put together, it almost becomes an heirloom in and of itself because Every block tells a story and then you get to tell your story as you put it together and have it in writing, which is cool. Uh, what you see here, so you've seen her squares as they were. This would show you the first setting triangle. And then the very first ones you saw would be how you'd frame it off. Um, the quilt is really big. I have a king size bed at home. If I used all of my blocks, it would be bigger than that. So. I'm not going to follow the directions and finish it like it should Imagine be. Imagine that. <laughs> um, and I don't think you are either. <coughs> but it kind of gives you a taste for what they look like. They're super fast to put together. This one is a mask. <laughs> um, really fast to put together. It almost takes as long to cut the blocks out, I think, as it does to sew them together. So it's been really fun. It's been kind of fun to look back. Um, this particular block, um, I think, was the only one that was in there. Um, that was a block about op oppression, I believe is what this block was called. Um, and it kind of, at the very end of the thing, incorporated the whole George Floyd um, events and kind of what's transpired from, from that as well. And, you know, being from Minnesota, you can't help but acknowledge all of those events. And so it's almost, it's not only about COVID, but then it just kind of ties the year of 2020 together because there's a lot of crap that happened last year. So, you know, is it a year you probably wanted to remember? No, but it's going to be a year that you have to remember. And the story that goes with the quilt <laughs> to be passed on to loved yep. ones is really it is. kind it's of really neat. Cool. So it was very intriguing to us. So it was. We're it, going to begin this. We're going to do one block a week. And, and if you're worried about that, I assure you that it, again, you can get these blocks done in in less than a half hour. Even if you're on a time crunch from start to finish, you can get a block done really fast. And it, it, so it starts on May 10th. That will be the first block. We'll get you your supply list ahead of time if you're interested in signing up. There is a registration on our website. It actually, if you go to the website, it's going to show it as a class. I don't know that it's necessarily a class. Um, we also hope to do a Facebook like group. group that's private. So only the people that are participating will have access to our group. You can share your blocks, share your stories. Yep. The cost is $25 to do the program. And there yep. are 
14 blocks that are written. There's a setting block that's independent yep. of the blocks that have a story to them. And if you wanted to finish it off to be like a king size bed, you would choose a set number of those blocks plus your setting blocks. And it gives you that layout, a layout for a table runner or a layout for a pillow. And if you did all three of those, it would use all of your blocks or you'll have the alternative directions that we that choose to do because they're a little more functional for us. Right. So we're excited to get this launched. Really um, are. I hope to get some more of my blocks put together. We really don't have a complete picture to share with you. Hopefully um, soon. What the quilt looks like. But the blocks that Lacey showed you are the blocks Those that are, are going blocks. to comprise the program. And then you can decide how you're going to put that together. You probably, if you're making your blocks large, you could end up with more than one quilt if you were making oh, it means, for somebody in your family. Yep. So um, we're excited about that. So if you're interested, check our website. Uh, once I get through working at the quilt shop, we are planning to kick off a Cotswold Circle Wool Group. Um, like I said, I have to work till May 17th, so depending on how busy it is at the office between now and then determines the start date for our group. Uh, it's been such that I haven't had time when I come home at night to do anything in the quilt shop other than get ready orders ready to be mailed out for the following day. So yes, it's an excuse, but it's also the reality of what life You're is like right now. So yeah. we're looking forward to summer coming we are we're looking forward to a new baby coming to our we family are. we're looking forward to catching up with you we just got an invitation to the sioux falls quilt show quilt show which we'll see who wins that battle my husband says no. say, i'm out <laughs> that's Lacey. my due date i'm out <laughs> and i'm thinking if i go down there i'll be really close to you yeah so, i'm not gonna complain you know. about that <laughs> <laughs> it could be a win-win situation it in my be. eyes <laughs> So until we have more show and tell or we're home here together on yep. the farm in the shop, we hope to spend some time sewing once tax season officially ends. And we better go check our hash browns and make sure they're not burnt. So we all hope you say a prayer for good hash browns <laughs> and we'll see you again very soon. Take care, my friends. Bye.